Hey, welcome to Story Lab. Skylar, I got your beakers. Oh, thanks. Hey, could you finish this? Sure. Awesome. Trade you. This week, we're talking about respect. Well, we take a look at something amazing Jesus said. What am I even doing? Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about respect which is showing others that they are important by what you say and do. Okay, gotta ask about the outfit. Why, what's wrong with it? Nothing, but I think it's visible from outer space. I'll admit, stripes and plaid usually don't get along. I wore this in honor of Opposite Day. Opposite Day is a thing? Yeah, it's on January 25th, but I just found out about it. To celebrate, I've even made a list of things that don't usually get along. Let's hear it. Number one. Cats and dogs. <laughs> Number two, heavy metal and polka music. Number three, pickles and chocolate. Want a bite? No thanks. Number four, water and oi. Water and oi. Wait, let's find out what gets along with water and what doesn't. It's time to play. Will it mix? We have here salt, oil, flour, and baking soda. Will our four contenders get along with this water and form a solution? Or like the Batman and the Joker, will they refuse to mix? A solution is formed when a chemical substance dissolves in water. Here goes. It appears that our salt and baking soda have completely dissolved in the water. But it's clear that water and oil do not mix and... Neither do flour and water. Sadly, they just don't get along. Let's try some more stuff. Honey! Yep. yep. Pepper. Nope. nope. Sprinkles. Yeah, yeah. Nope. Wait a sec. I think the color is dissolving off the sprinkles. But the actual sprinkles don't mix. So it's a yeah, no. Or a no, yep. Those are two words that don't get along. It's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in Matthew, the very first book in the New Testament. But before Matthew, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God sent a tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem, God's very own son, Jesus. When Jesus grew up, he began to travel from town to town, teaching and healing. And everywhere he went, huge crowds gathered because Jesus spoke with more authority than any other teacher ever. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. You know, one day Jesus sat down on a hillside in Galilee to teach his disciples, but it wasn't long before many people joined the crowd. They were amazed at what Jesus said. His teaching went beyond anything they'd ever heard before. Blessed are those who are humble. They will be given the earth. Jesus claimed that people who are sad or humble or hungry or those who suffer for doing what's right are actually blessed. He said his followers are like salt and light. He said that calling someone a fool is just as bad as, get this, murder. It all added up to one thing. What's on the outside matters much less than what's on the inside. What's in your heart? 
People squeezed closer to hear as Jesus continued. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor, hate your enemy. But here is what I tell you. Love your enemies. Pray for those who hurt you. What? Up to this point, most wise teachers and philosophers had agreed that you should not hurt someone unless they hurt you first. Then you had every right to get back at them. If someone punched you in the mouth and knocked out a tooth, you could punch them and knock out their tooth. If they said something mean to you, then you should shout something just as mean back at them. But Jesus taught a new way of understanding. Love your enemies. Now, it's easy to think of your enemy as the really bad guys, like a supervillain about to destroy the world, or a dangerous criminal on the run, or even the biggest bully on the playground. But your enemies can also be the people you're around every day, like the classmate who cuts ahead of you in line, even your little brother who's super annoying. Loving your enemy is simply loving anyone you don't get along with. That love is more than a warm, fuzzy feeling. You don't have to feel loving to love your enemies. In fact, you probably won't. Instead, you can speak kind words. If someone insults you, choose something kind to say in return. Don't grumble and complain about them behind their backs. In fact, you can show respect. There might even be something nice you can say about that person. You should also do well to them. If someone trips you up on the way to PE class, you can tell them that's not cool. But don't look for ways to get back at them. And most important of all, pray for them. Ask God to care for your enemy and help you forgive them. Prayer might change your enemy and it can change your own heart too. Speak, do well, pray. When we love our enemies like that, Jesus went on to say, Then you will be children of your Father who is in heaven. Jesus kept going. He said, It's easy to be nice to anyone who's nice to you. Anyone can do that. But God gives good gifts like sunshine and rain to provide for everyone, even people who do wrong things. We are made in God's image. And when we show respect and do good things for those who don't treat us well, we're actually showing the world what God is like. Okay, that's a lot to wrap my brain around. <laughs> no kidding. So, what's, what's our, our part, part in the story? story? Well, choosing to love your enemy is actually a really awesome opportunity. It's a way we can work with God to show God's love to the world. Like, maybe a kid on your soccer team keeps making fun of you when you don't block goals. Instead of saying mean things about them, you could cheer for them when they make a great kick. Or if your teacher loses patience and takes away recess for the whole class, even though it wasn't your fault, you could offer to clean up the classroom. It makes me think of my little brother. He drives me nuts, because he's always borrowing my shirts without asking and getting stains on them. So what do you do? What I want to do is yell at him and mess his stuff up, but I could keep my temper and show him how to get stains out of them. Yep. You never want to let someone keep hurting you, but you can always respond with kindness. Exactly. It's not an easy thing to do for sure. But when we follow Jesus, we have the power of God's Spirit to help us speak kind words, do well, and pray for our enemies. Gotta respect that. See y'all next time. Bye, Bye Erica. So here's the thing, show respect even when you don't get along. Like plaids and stripes. Ugh. Ew, what is this? Fur, my dog is shedding. Oh. Hey, will it mix? Dog fur. Nope. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. We'll see you next, next time. time. Beep.
Everybody is a treasure Yeah, everybody ever Let me tell you, let me tell you, it's true Everybody has value We all come from different places Different stories, different races But let me tell you, let me tell you, it's true Everybody has value Give a little bit, a little bit Even if you're not feeling it, feeling it Just show a little on it Yeah, one to another So I'm gonna place my bets On living my life with respect Cause I don't wanna regret Making everything about myself Yeah, I know that if I put somebody down It's gonna come right back around So I'm gonna do my best To live my life with respect Yeah If it's your father or your mother If it's a sister or a brother Let them know about what you say and do That they have so much value If it's a friend or a stranger If it's your family or your neighbor Let them know about what you say and do That everybody has found So I'm gonna place my bets On living my life with respect Cause I don't wanna regret Making everything about myself Yeah, I know that if I put somebody down It's gonna come right back around So I'm gonna do my best To live my life with respect Just a little bit, little bit Even if you're not feeling it, feeling it So I'm gonna place my bets on living my life with respect Cause I don't wanna regret making everything about myself Yeah, I know that if I put somebody down, it's gonna come right back around So I'm gonna do my best to live my life with respect So I'm gonna place my bets on living my life Okay, now we can parallel park the desk. All right, Okay. super easy. You know this always makes me nervous. Don't be nervous, this right. is easy. Ready? Okay, you always yell at me. Okay, here we go, I'm ready. Swivel the desk. Swivel the desk. Mm -hmm. Swivel, swivel, no, swivel. Swivel, I'm in. Swivel. This is what swiveling is? Swivel, Okay. no, it's too much. Back. All right. All right, we, yeah, it's, it's a very tight. Code. You gotta be deliberate. Don't be afraid. Okay. All right? Yes. Now, swivel. Swi no, that's too much. Swivel. No more swivel. Oh, I got swivel sickness. Swivel. Swivel. I'm swiveling. Swivel, swivel. 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 You're not swiveling right. I am swiveling right. No, you're swiveling left. I'm swiveling right. To your left, my right. What? Swivel! All right. Swivel! Swivel! Welcome to, to the So and So Show. Show. I'm Brandon. And I'm John. As you can see, we're in the car. Yeah, not in my basement where we're supposed to be at this moment because one of us had the brilliant idea to leave the studio and run out for tacos. Which I offered to buy, so you offered to drive, but then your car broke down. Did you not see that your check engine light was on? How was I supposed to know what that meant? It means to check your engine. Well, I know that now. 
So, we are stuck in the car and have no idea when we'll see a tow truck. So we've decided to do the show right here. We're just gonna make it up as we go along, right? Our best kind of show. Yeah, yeah, our <laughs> best kind of show. We love to <laughs> make things up. Up, up, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. when we. Yeah, when we empathize. Empathize, yeah. Empathize. Empathize. No, no uh, we could play the license plate game. You know, the, the game where you, you try to find license plates from as many different places as possible? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great idea, idea, great idea. Yeah, so we, we wait for a car to drive by. Oh, I think, oh, oh, oh. Oh, I think here's coming right in. Um, uh, uh, Michigan, I think. No, uh, no, no, I think it, no, I think it said Hawaii. You sure? No, wait, Hawaii is an island. Well, maybe they shipped it over in a crate? ship a car over in, from Hawaii. Right, <sighs> this game doesn't really work when you're not driving. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I wish we had a guest or something. <laughs> I know, someone who knows stuff. Yeah. <laughs> hey! Ah! Leonard! That's Leonard. Leonard! Don't wear it out! <laughs> I'm Leonard Fortescue and I am a professional metal detectorist. Oh, hang on. I use Camilla here to find fame and fortune. What are you doing? Same as you, I'm sitting in the car. Yeah, but why are you in the back seat? I already told you! I'm gonna play a game! It's called Backseat Booyah! The game's pretty easy to understand. Camilla here is gonna help me find treasure in your back seat. And when I find something, you have to try and guess what it is. I'm gonna give you three yes or no questions. Yeah, wait, wait, you're gonna dig for treasure in my back seat? Yeah, that's exactly right. Have you played this before? No. <laughs> oh, all right then, let's do this. Y'all face the front, all right. no peeking. Okay. All right. What are you gonna do? Oh. Well, I just wanna make sure. She's calibrated. Okay. Oh, oh, am I getting a signal? Hang on, hang on. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> hang on. I got something. Okay. All right. You got three questions. You ready? Yeah. First one. Got one. Yeah. Does it fit in your hand? Actually, it does. Uh, can you eat it? I guess you could, but I, I would not. So it's probably some kind of moldy food or something. Uh, is it a cookie? Uh, hey, you know what? That's close enough. Look at that. It's an old Teddy Graham. <laughs> wow. I found a Teddy Graham with a metal detector. All right, round two. All right, go to work, Camilla. Need help? No, I got it. I got it. Whoa, what is this? You got to ever see one of these again. Any guesses? Uh, uh, is it money? Uh, no, but I would say it is worth a pretty penny. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, well, uh, is it a, uh, like a vintage action figure? Nope. Uh, uh, is it a really old stamp? Nope. Oh, is it, is it ah, a... Ah, that's your three guesses. Oh. It's an official Leonard Fortescue trading card, back from my lacrosse days. <laughs> look at that, look how fit I was. I can run almost seven yards. I, uh, Leonard, I don't recall ever having one of those. Maybe it fell out of my pocket. You know, I like to keep some just in case some of my fans show up. I'll just put it back in my pocket. Okay, let's uh, move on to round three. Oh, we're, oh, we're going, to enough three rounds. More stuff. Let's see, let's, let's move on back here. Let's see what we can add here. Really, right there. Okay, let's see. Oh, wait a minute. Look at this. Okay, you got three questions. Is it more food? Uh, definitely not. Uh, will it fit in my wallet? I have not seen your wallet, but I would uh, care to guess no. I don't know, is it a TV? A TV? I'm just assuming it's gonna be something strange. <laughs> ding, 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 ding! It is definitely something strange. I found a trombone! <laughs> Oh, uh, a trombone? Yeah, right, yeah, I totally forgot. When my car horn quit working, I used trombone instead. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I know it's ridiculous Why because by the time I would pull the trombone out to play it, the car would have already driven by you and I- You wreck your car when well, you're doing No, that. no, the trombone goes out the window. 
I, I, no. Well, as my Uncle Bobo used to say, when a possum gets mad, you need to quit pulling his tail. So I think it's time for me to skedaddle. Say goodbye, Camilla. Wait, wait. What about a possum? How does he do that? No more questions! It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys, mm, still no tow truck? Nope. Well, I got a story about how people should treat each other. Do you think you might want to hear it? I think so, Kellen, yeah, take it away. All right. Well, today we're looking at some verses from the book of Matthew. Matthew was one of Jesus' 12 disciples and he wrote down something Jesus said during a famous sermon that we now call the Sermon on the Mount. Here's what Jesus taught. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor, hate your enemy. But here's what I tell you, love your enemies, pray for those who hurt you. So Jesus said to love your neighbor. That's the easy part. Your neighbors are often the people around you who love and care about you. Those kind of people should be easy to love. The hard part is what Jesus said next, love your enemies and pray for those who hurt you. Not as easy, is it? Well, Let's see how easy it is for our friends Count Lupe and Mr. Fritter. One day, Count Lupe and Mr. Fritter were out for a bicycle ride. We are going way too slow, Mr. Fritter. I have a need, a need for going faster. I beg your pardon, Count, but I thought we were out for a nice casual ride today. No, I will not pedal casual. I am not the casual Count. I am the Count of Lupe, which means I go fast. Ha <laughs> ha! I ring my bell at you! Get out of my way, slow pork! I don't think you should ring your bell so angrily, Count. That person may have a reason to ride that slow. Nonsense! They are slow riding on purpose, simply to make me angry. If you will not move, then you are now my enemy and will get more bicycle bell! Please, Count. Move! You should watch the road or we might... Then I shall go around him! <laughs> I don't think that's such a good... Oh! Idea. Oh, dear. Tandem bicycle. Oh, no! It looks like the Count not only fell off the bike, but he fell into the trap that so many of us do. He treated someone he did not like terribly. He got angry, he lost his patience, and he didn't listen to those around him. And unfortunately, he paid the price. This is the second part of what Jesus said. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Even the tax collectors do that. If you greet only your own people, what more are you doing than others? Even people who are ungodly do that. So Jesus was saying that everyone loves the people who love them, even people who don't follow Jesus. But if you do follow Jesus, you should love not just the people who love you, but also the people who don't love you. Okay, why don't we give the count one more try? Here they are on just a normal school day. I am going to completely ace the math test today and show that Tammy Tomato who is the best in class. Yep. We've studied hard and Tammy Tomato won't be able to make fun of me for making a B minus minus again. Yeah, <laughs> we will crush and dice her. Excuse me, Count Lupe, Mr. Fritter? Is that someone talking to me, Mr. Fritter? Or just vine growing? <laughs> Hello, Tammy. Is there something you need? Well, I know we don't always get along, and I made fun of your B minus minus, but I accidentally left my math notes at home, and I was wondering if I could borrow your notes so that I could do some last minute studying. I'm really worried about this test. You? Borrow our notes? Ho ho ho! Don't make me laugh like I just did. Like you would ever let us borrow yours. Now be gone. <laughs> That wasn't very nice, Count. I'm going to wee in. I'm going to wee. Ooh, be careful, Count. Ha ha, I'm going to wee in. Oh, oh, ah! Not again. Here you go, Tammy. You can borrow my notes. And good luck on the test. Thank you. Do not do it, Mr. 
Sprinter. Do not fraternize with the enemy. Oh my, medic. I think I may have gotten the point. Ooh, hopefully the count really has gotten the point this time, but I'm not so sure. But I am glad Matthew recorded what Jesus had to say and the challenge that he gave us. Loving and showing respect to people we like isn't enough. That should be a given. As Jesus followers, we should try to do more than that. We should love and respect people even when we don't get along. That's how Jesus loved people after all. And that's what he expects from us. Wow. Thanks, Kellen. That was great. Yeah, uh, we really needed that reminder. I think we were starting to get a little irritated with one another. <laughs> no problem. And I hope your tow truck comes soon. Thanks, Kellen. Yeah, bye. I'm sorry if I was impatient with you, friend. I've just been frustrated with the whole car situation. So. Oh, same. Getting along with someone gets a little harder when you're in an enclosed space with them for several hours. So uh, I'm sorry, too. Friends. <laughs> Friends. You probably don't yeah, yeah. need the seat belts no, while we're no, still. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> Reveal the question. Oh yeah. When is it hard to get along with someone? I think we just prove that it can be difficult to get along with someone when you're frustrated about anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's easy to take your frustration out on other people. It might be hard to get along with someone if they're different from you, mm. uh, if they like different things or act different ways. Or like different kinds of music. Oh! oh. You know, Camilla is more of a country girl, but I'm a little bit jazz, techno fusion kind of guy. But we make it work. Well, uh, I don't think we're going anywhere anytime soon, but the, the, that's the end of the show. Yeah, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And I'm going to go take a nap. All right. Hey, could you? Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank that's the so-and-so show.